Hey, so it's you again, huh? Seems you stumbled upon me while I'm brainstorming again. Let's see what I have on the table here. I'm going to build this craft world spirit seer, but I want to explore if I can give him a kind of individual or special touch and for this I have pulled out my latest uh, not Van Zaw but Delac Necromundus Pro and I've already clipped out a few parts around um, that yeah I was going for more sinister and alien why but I feel this is this is too much. I want to use the main body of the miniature of the original and we'll explore a few versions of upper body. I also collected a few spares from my elder bits box to go for alternative weaponry. At the beginning we only need clippers and a little bit of patafix. No glue is needed at the moment as I go for clipping out the main parts of the body and having a look at what they look like in combination with the deluxe body. Using the pad fix only so that the parts do not go crazy and all over the place. And while of course those parts won't fit directly, this is only a kind of prequel or a, I don't know, a sketch. Let's call it a sketch. So at first glance this looks rather cool. What I could think of is that the helmet has to go deeper. We also would pick up that back fin and attach it somehow. Also get the torso a little closer. We will get a little bit more volume around here with the original cape of the miniature and we might go with alternative weaponry as set for I think having him having a spear would look cool. Maybe we'll find some alternative arm somewhere here. I'll bait it is possibly heresy to use the Necromunda models for Xenos, but I kind of like the idea of him being a bit more like a space pirate, renegade, whatever. Yeah, this could be cool. Let's get him on a plinth then and explore further. So while I usually use Patafix to get my miniatures or bases to those cues, this time I use the hoodie from Redgrass Games that comes with their painting handle. And as I want to have the option to make a more scenic base, I place the miniature a little bit higher by gluing a strip of sprue beneath the feet. First I glue the two main parts of their lower body together. 
because I don't want those to slip and I am pretty sure that I will use these. I also see to it that the shorter or slimmer side of the sprue goes toward the feet. This makes it easy for me later to fill the area with that with uh, sand or putty without touching the feet later. And thus I can also get the miniature of the base without damaging it too much. My favorite plastic glue for this work is the Contacta Liquid from Revell. Uh, you also get it in another kind of bottles, but I prefer the one with the plastic brush, like this one. Um, the good thing about this glue is that it melts the plastic and you can still work with the freshly glued parts so it doesn't cure instantly but you have a little bit of time. Now would also be the time to get all remaining parts out of the sprue so we can work with these. I uh, said before I want to use the rope and I also want to implement uh, these long trestles or the tablet, however you call it, on a Zenus. The pistol, of course. And I'm not sure, 100% sure, but we might also want to use that part of the back. And before we search afterward for the staff, let's clip it out too. Mm -hmm. Probably this is all rather unfocused. So here we are back again. I left the miniature to dry for an hour. Also glued together the upper body here. And now we're going to attach these. For this I first get rid of that snippet of plastic over here. And I also want to remove that little satchel over here. But as I want to use it later, I'm going to cut it with a razor saw. Uh, and inside, it would have been better to get this done while the parts were not glued together. Because this would have given us more freedom of movement for the saw. I think I have cut something hard with that saw before, so it's not going very good for me at the moment. So I'm taking my cutter and try not to. <clears throat> lose the tiny part. Now we should have enough space to play around with this piece here. Make it a bit slimmer around the waist. 
we don't have the opportunity of um, studies physiology so we can just add a few pouches here and there uh, we have a few bits of equipment yeah that's right but nothing too fancy to cover all the angles but I think it could work I'm trying to get as clear I'm gonna sand down both parts a bit so I have a rougher surface and also get uh, some kind of plastic powder onto the areas that I want to glue. This will give me a better connection here between the two parts. And I also, as usual when having bigger parts like these, I put glue on both parts and then I wait a few seconds for it to uh, eat at the plastic. So I can merge parts a little better. We have a little gap over here, but we will be able to fill that later. If everything goes wrong, we can go in with green stuff. Let's mark out that precision here. <clears throat> Take away a little bit of the road there. can just fit it a little bit more snugly. While we leave the body to dry I'm going to resize the helmet here. Hopefully we're on focus. I know that the part at the back here will be in the way when I want to have it inside the collar. So I'm trying to reshape it, keep as much of the shape as possible while being able to put it inside a kind of gorget. Yeah, I think that might work. Of course we will attach the head in the end when the arms are on the miniature so we can see the final it's always useful to take a step backwards while kit bashing. I found this guy here in my bits box. It's the Harlequin character who accompanies Ephraim Stern. I do not know his name, but I knew that he had some cool swords, so we might modify our spirits here into a warlock and especially with the black arm I found previously this should look cool Something like that. Hmm. 
not too bad. So this would be the basic setup to work with. I want to add these garlands here. Let's call them that. I also have a small dagger-like sword for him and these ammunition pouches or stuff like that. Might have a look if I find some grenades or something like that. Eventually, that backpack that's also from the direct just to give him a little bit more space faring character. I'll leave this part here off that's from the original spirit seer and keep it in my bits collection for further use. I also won't use the uh, arms from that miniature. So yeah, I've basically streamlined the miniature very much to my liking, I have to say. We'll see if I keep that little snake here. So I scraped away a little bit of the pointing arm and I will now add plenty of plastic glue to its shoulder joint and also to the arm itself and hopefully I do not have to use green stuff at all or at least not too much of it when it comes to filling gaps, if there are any. Yeah, it seems that we can go without. I try to have the... I always say I try, but I yeah, trying usually means I work apart as long as it takes to have the position I want. I want the arm to be straight and pointing in the direction uh, he is looking at the moment, so we get the effect of a uh, psychic spell being cast or something like that. Let's tackle these tiny <coughs> uh, whatever they are on the garment. I well, the, the chance is quite small that I will use um, the spirit seer's chest later for anything, especially when I cut the most characteristic part of it. But it doesn't hurt to be precise here. And you never know if you actually will use a part or not. So I always try to be as clean as possible. <coughs> when getting pieces of bigger parts of miniatures. So let's get these two flimsies attached. I go with plastic glue on the piece itself only. Uh -huh, come on. Yeah, 
why exactly I do this in this case, I'm not sure because it doesn't really make sense. We have that gap over here that we can fill with glue and we now know that another part will end down here. So let's use this to our advantage. 